These are my top five causes of arguments in a relationship. And I am going to enlist the help from Celine and Dion, <laughs> who are going to demonstrate some of these causes. And we're going to start with the aggressive, passive aggressive dance, which is perhaps one of the more common causes of arguments in a relationship that I see in my private practice. Dion was so excited about the new Marvel movie that had just come out. He'd bought the cape, reserved the tickets, and was acting basically like a 12-year-old the week leading up to its release date. And Celine said she would go see it with him, even though she loathes any kind of movie where people can fly and there are aliens from other dimensions. But rather than say she would rather stick pins in her eyes than go see this movie, she sucked it up. But on the night of the movie, she accidentally procrastinated getting ready and they nearly missed the movie. Dion was furious with Celine because he missed the trailers, which is apparently a thing for some people. And when he confronted her, rather than take accountability for her lack of communication and for procrastinating, she got upset, shut down and refused to talk to him. And this obviously made Dion even more angry, which made Celine more likely to shut down and we're in a loop. This is one of the more common causes of arguments in a relationship in which one partner keeps their thoughts and feelings about a disagreement or a confrontation inside. Now, to be fair, most of the time, this partner is unaware of both of their feelings and the behaviors they're exhibiting. But unexpressed thoughts and feelings often come out in unconscious ways, which is the passive part of passive aggressive. But that makes the other person even more upset and that closes the loop. So Celine is the stonewaller. Like a cat, she acts cool, but on the inside, she keeps her anger hidden. She punishes Dion silently, which creates more drama and more friction. Because when you don't talk about what is going on with you or you withhold feelings, it is an act of hostility. The silent treatment is hostile. And hostility will often get a reaction from your partner and the chain keeps on going. The skills that Celine really needs to learn are all about talking about anger, not being afraid of confrontation, and uh, learning how to assert herself. Without these skills, they're going to be on this repetitive loop, which is one of those main causes of arguments in a relationship, and it'll keep happening over and over again. And I tend to find that arguments in relationships like this are exactly what brings people into my private practice. If you are finding that you're having the same fight over and over again, you're probably in a similar pattern. Until we can learn to spot these automatic behaviors and develop new skills to break the cycle, we might be stuck in them for a while. If you don't know me, my name is Oliver and I'm a family and couples therapist in Los Angeles. I love helping people grow great relationships. And in particular, I love helping people turn conflict into connection. I try and put a video up each week and there's usually handouts and activities and PDFs for you to download that are all completely free. So please hit subscribe and that way you will be the first to know when I post something new and you can get that download straight away. In this video, I want to look at the top five causes for arguments in a relationship that I see in my work as a therapist. I've got four more of these patterns that you should be on the lookout for in your relationship. The second reason for arguments in a relationship is when one partner withholds feelings until they are ready to explode. Like a dormant volcano, this type of communication is actually a lack of communication until their anger builds up over a long enough time to detonate and explode. Ultimately, the impact of all of this bottled up anger can often be really destructive and it renders the relationship irreparable. Dion would get really angry about Celine teasing his love of superhero movies, but never mentioned anything about it, thinking uh, he could be cool and it would slide right off him. But Dion often felt like an emotional punching bag for Celine and um, he felt that she didn't really see all the good stuff she was doing. She was only really focused on the things she didn't like like the Marvel movies. And this is all part of our confirmation bias. We have to be aware of this because what it means is we spot and hold on to the things we're looking for and it closes our eyes to the full picture. It's like wearing blinkers and you can only see the negative. This dynamic can end in any number of unhelpful ways. 
One possibility is that Dion could one day explode, perhaps physically, but probably more likely verbally, and he will be devastating with his words. He could also continue to keep that anger inside and keep that resentment inside and somehow find another woman who treats him very differently. That would be very attractive to him and an affair could start. Or one day he could snap uh, in a very different way, come home after work with divorce papers. And I have seen all of those happen in my private practice. Dion is a volcano or an exploder. They keep things inside until there is this violent eruption. The best case scenario for a volcano is that their anger makes their partner terrified or hurt or afraid. And we don't want any of those in a relationship, right? But in the worst case, that explosion is so bad that there's no coming back from it. Dion really needs to work on communicating his anger in healthy ways, being more aware of what is going on inside of him so that he can share it before it bottles up and becomes explosive. Before I go on, if you want to find out your pattern of conflict in a relationship, take our free quiz to help you identify your conflict style. Knowing your conflict style can be the start of changing these patterns and loops that I'm talking about in this video. It's a really healthy way to start understanding your relationship and the dynamics in it. If you sign up for the email list there, I'll send you all kinds of ideas, tips, tricks, and tools, and handouts about relationships that I've learned along the way in nearly a decade of being a therapist. And I'll tell you more about the Conflict Compass, an online course I wrote for couples that includes causes of arguments in a relationship like this, but also um, how to turn conflict into connection. So the next cause for arguments in a relationship is one that I see in my office quite a lot, and it's the histrionic reaction. This is a really polite way of saying that one partner can turn into a bit of a drama queen, and in doing so, they can focus their interactions on their behaviors, their dramatic behaviors, rather than the actual issue. So the partner of this person plays into this because they then have to focus on calming down the behaviors rather than problem solving around whatever the initial issue was. There's rarely any solving of problems in these types of relationships because the upset partner is sending signals that this topic is off limits and we can't talk about it anymore. Whenever Dion brought up an issue he had with Celine, she managed to turn everything into a woe is me pity party. It's all my fault or I do so much and I, you don't appreciate what I do and you don't love me and what's the point in even being with me anymore? This type of reaction is probably unconscious and Celine probably doesn't realize that she is playing the victim. She will go to this place anytime Dion voices a grievance or a complaint and in therapy he admitted that Celine's crying made him feel guilty and helpless. So her reaction was actually causing um, Dion to be pinned into a corner. So he gave up even thinking about reporting any issues in their relationship. Celine was using a conflict pattern that is in the realm of the deflector. Now, the deflector can be slippery like a fox or a weasel because they can change the subject. If you put this conflict response in a spectrum, at one end, you could see reactions like Celine's, somewhere in the middle, any politician ever who's asked a question and just watch them change the subject or answer the question they want to, not the one that was actually asked. Maybe further down is someone who cracks a joke and tries to lighten the tone around any conflict or serious issue that's brought up. They're trying to do that a little bit too. Ultimately though, any form of the deflector doesn't allow for disagreements to be aired and solutions to be found. And ultimately, um, conflict doesn't get resolved, which is one of my top causes of arguments in a relationship. Have you spotted your pattern or loop in this video yet? If you have, let me know. And if you haven't, by the end of this video, tell me. I've got a few more of these up my sleeve, so I will make another video for you if you want it. I also love getting questions about relationships, and if I can, I try and make a video uh, to answer it. So if you've got a question for me, leave it in the comments below. Let's talk about the pattern around arguments in a relationship that happens when there's one person who is a conflict avoider. Conflict avoiders avoid disagreements and secretly hope that it just passes. They delay difficult conversations as long as possible, hoping that time will heal or someone else will bring it up so they don't have to. Those who avoid conflict usually do so 
for one of two reasons, because there's actually two types of conflict avoiders. One of the types is the um, self-preservation avoider. They have usually had disagreements in the past, a partner or perhaps a caregiver, in which disagreements escalated into significant conflict. So to avoid these really intense confrontations with their current loved one, the self-preservation avoider sidesteps power struggles and anger out of fear. In a slightly different way, they could avoid conflict out of love because they prioritize harmony and peace and keeping their partner happy. But in doing so, they might find that they're suppressing their own feelings and needs and sacrificing their sense of self for the other person. And that doesn't go anywhere good because resentment builds up over time. But the direct impact of this pattern is that the avoider tends to distance or shut down in the way a turtle or an ostrich does. They actually vary how long they close off for, some for days, some for weeks, some for months. The self-serving avoider dodges conflict for their own reasons. They might want to jump over discussions about their own behavior to escape accountability. By not being transparent about their actions, they free themselves from responsibility. They might make decisions, for example, that are not in the best interest of the relationship and then justify those actions by saying that they didn't want to stress the other person out. This is a form of conflict avoidance and it can be really destructive as it evades accountability. In grown-up relationships, we have to own our faults and our behaviors. We can't blame the other person or other things. And if it sounds familiar, it is a bit like what the deflector does. So Celine was actually raised by a mother who would shun her for months if she failed to do what she was told. And as a married woman, Celine is finding that she's doing the same to Dion. And Dion told us in the session that this was so potent that he was actually afraid of Celine and backed off even more from the relationship. And of course, this emotional distance can be a huge cause of arguments in a relationship. So what do you make of this one? Is it familiar to you? Drop me a comment below if, and if you're enjoying this, hit subscribe and that way we can stay in touch whenever I post a new video. Also feel free to check out the Conflict Compass if you want more information, more tools and techniques to deal with conflict and the patterns just like this that we're talking about. The last of my top five causes for arguments in a relationship is the criticizer complaint loop. So I recently got a complaint about my TikTok videos because I was putting the automatic captions somewhere on the screen that didn't make sense. And according to the person that sent me this very polite message, these captions were covering something else up on the screen and she said that it was really hard to read. But that was a complaint. It was a very nicely worded complaint, but it was still an expression of dissatisfaction with me my work and something that I, that complaint helped me improve my TikTok videos so that more people can read the captions and I took it as feedback. So in an ideal world, complaints in relationships are kind of helpful. It's valuable information that we can use to work together to fix some of the things going on in our relationship or make things better in our relationship, make us feel more connected. A complaint can be ignored or valued. Sometimes when complaints go unheard, they escalate over time and then they turn into criticism or disdain. This is a much more mean and sometimes a vicious personal attack. Celine told me that Dion would often make comments about how long she spent in the bathroom in the morning, making little jabs about her being a narcissist or self-obsessed, which clearly doesn't set the day up for a great start. When I asked her what she thought Dion was trying to convey with these complaints, she said that she knew it had something to do with being woken up so early or how loud the alarm was, but she wasn't really too focused on that because it was so hurtful. When a complaint goes unheard, it turns into criticism and disdain, and it has the intent to hurt someone or manipulate their behaviors through that criticism. It seemed that Dion had let his feelings build up about something that it was now coming out in a really hurtful, manipulative way. When this happens, it's perceived by Celine to be less about genuine concerns or a, a problem that could be fixed. It's more about getting the upper hand or making her feel inferior. So she doesn't hear the complaint as feedback anymore. Dion was using this level of complaint with Celine saying things like, my ex never set their alarm that loud, 
or, oh my God, you're so vain. Why does it take you 45 minutes to get ready in the morning? That would be like the lady that emailed me about my TikTok videos, calling me a useless piece of trash and an idiot therapist for not knowing where the captions on the video go. I mean, calm the F down, lady. And I probably wouldn't have made the changes she asked because I wouldn't have been in the mood to keep her happy and I would have thrown away her suggestions when one partner wounds the other. By using criticism instead of a complaint, it closes the door on cooperation, which makes that partner even more frustrated and more likely to use criticism instead of a complaint. And again, we're in another loop of constant arguments in a relationship. So I hope these were helpful to you. And if you didn't spot your pattern or loop in this video, let me know. I have a lot more thoughts to share about this and I'd be happy to share them with you. So hit subscribe and follow and I'll keep them coming.